We're here at the Metrics Marketing Optimization Summit, New York, and I'm here with uh, Jeff Jonas. So Jeff is the chief scientist of something? I'm the, yes, I'm the, I'm the chief scientist of a group at IBM called the uh, Entity Analytics Group, and I'm also an IBM Distinguished Engineer. Okay, and would you share with us uh, some of uh, the things that you do at IBM that are especially interesting? Uh, what I do is invent stuff. I've spent my whole life inventing stuff before they bought my company in uh, 2005. I've invented plus or minus a hundred different kinds of uh, systems and now at IBM I'm doing the same thing I'm, I'm working on my new next generation uh, technology right now it's a, you know it has an internal code name I call it G2 it's a skunk works project I had a really small team working on it secretly for two years I talked about it just for the first time uh, publicly in an official way uh, January of this year okay and what is it about the, well this thing I'm creating now is uh, I guess you could call it a sense-making engine. Its, its purpose is to take a transaction at the moment it arrives in an enterprise. It doesn't matter whether you just bought a pile of data and it's a batch, it sticks its eyeball in it and would read through the batch, or it doesn't matter whether it's a web interaction. But the moment a piece of data hits the observational space of an organization, it's like a puzzle piece arrives. And what it does is it figures out how that piece of data relates to all the other pieces of data that have been seen. So that's like taking a puzzle piece to the puzzle. So when you take a puzzle piece to the puzzle and you find a home for it, suddenly you see the other puzzle pieces around it. Now your understanding's better. This means higher quality predictions. So what I'm working on now is doing how the data finds the data, puzzle piece finds puzzle, mm -hmm. and then figuring out if it's good news and bad or bad news and what you want to do about it specifically. Like what ad should you give them or should you give them the loan or not? Okay, okay? sub 200 milliseconds over billions of rows of data. I'm doing that now. Sounds very exciting. It is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly sleep. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I think this, related, this relates to one of the big problems of, of uh, web, the web analytics industry, which is uh, integrating between different types of data, finance data and customer data and web data. So how do you see these things merging? Should they merge? They have to merge if you want to get a higher quality prediction. I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that I, I see repeatedly is somebody will build a specialty widget to study just Twitter feeds. That's like studying only the yellow puzzle pieces. And then somebody goes, oh, we have something that just does blogs. That's just studying the green puzzle pieces. And then somebody else goes, we're doing click interactions. All we do is click interactions. We're so good at looking at click interactions and making predictions. And I'm like, those are just the magenta puzzle pieces. And really what you have to do for higher quality prediction is you have to weave these things together. Okay, and how do you choose what to measure? I mean, there's so many things to measure. Should we measure just everything or should we choose the most important things to measure? Well, I think, well, first of all, the only things you can begin to measure are things that are in your observation space, okay. right? It's, and that means the data that's available to you, both internally and data that you can buy and data that you can scrape off the web. <clears throat> that's your observation space. Then you have to choose what is worth integrating because you might not choose to integrate everything. Mm -hmm. um, when you do that, you th uh, the, in the domains where I'm playing, it's about the real world entities. The real world entities are the people, the organizations, mm -hmm. and the things, uh, and the places. So cars, boats, planes, Starbucks, number one, two, three, on the street intersection. So it's people, places, and things. What it really takes to improve uh, enterprise prediction? <clears throat> I think I think big data is going to help. Okay. And I and I, when you put a puzzle together at home, there's a point when you put a puzzle together where it puffs out, and it covers covers a lot of space. Then then it has the most ambiguity. It's it's hard to have a prediction then because it's taking up so much space. But if you get the right puzzle pieces, pretty soon the puzzle begins to collapse. And pretty soon, the quality of your prediction about what you're seeing and where the pieces belong and knowing what each element of the picture is improves. And that's because you brought the right data together and you integrated it properly. Mm -hmm. So I think big data is going to Im uh, help improve prediction. And I think there's one kind of data, um, geospatial data, about where you and I are and how we move that's going to be superfood, analytic superfood. Because the quality of predictions that you can make uh, when you weave all these other kinds of data together with, you know, how I go to work every day, what my route is, uh, where, I, where I spend my time, uh, 
it's going to really radically change. So that's the future of uh, analytics? Yeah. Geospatial data is going to rip the lid off of what's computable. And, this, and with that, it's going to bring a bunch of privacy consequences that I think is really important to bring out. I think consumers need to be aware that it, when they keep subscribing for services with their geolocation, uh, you know, how's that data going to be used? How revealing is it? Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. It was very interesting talking to you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Okay.